thing is is uh, is rolling good. Let me see. Come on. I think everything is okay. Sometimes my panel doesn't show up right away. That looks up oh, says I'm offline. Well, it looks like I'm doing well here. Hey, Thursday live office hours. Great to see everybody. Give me a second just to make sure my uh, my stuff is good. We've got a special show for you today. And uh, for whatever reason, it's saying offline, but I could see me on YouTube. You know what? I'm just going to go with it. Sometimes this happens. Hey, Thursday live office hours, 11 a.m. Central in the U.S. Virtually every week, helping you build a career you love. We got a great show for you today. And when I say we, I mean we. I called in some reinforcements. You might know Stacy from the team. So get in, say hi. Let me know where you're from. Let me know what you do. Let me know what you need. Put some question marks in front of your questions if they're for me. Uh, and, I, and I did say Stacy's joining us. So if you got questions for Stacy as, as, as we go through our, our little teaching portion today, please mention that you got any questions for her. We're going to have a great show for you. We really are. Now, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we've, uh, we've, we've got a little show for you. I'm going to interview Stacy, and she's going to share some lessons from her life with you. Uh, if you don't know who Stacy is, she is our uh, social media manager, our content manager, our content director. Basically, she's the one that helps me circulate a lot of our content and keep our communities going. And uh, she actually was in my, uh, my job search boot camp, and she, uh, she sent me her resume for a resume review. So as I was reviewing her resume, uh, this was probably, I, I, I don't know that I got the exact month correct, but it was probably early part of, of last year of 2019, maybe the spring, very early summer, something like that. And, uh, and she was working, she was in, employed, but she was in the program, and I think she was uh, not very aggressively looking, but she wanted to get her resume in order, so I, I did a resume review, and I noticed she had these skills that I thought, you know, some, at some point, I, boy, we need somebody like her. So I kind of tucked it away, and uh, we weren't really ready to bring somebody on to the team. But uh, hang on one second. I, that's going to drive me nuts. Okay. We weren't really ready to bring somebody on the team, but I kind of filed it later in the year. Uh, time, you know, time, time kept, kept rolling on and, and, and Kara and I and some of the other folks that, that helped us, we knew we, knew we needed some, some additional reinforcements. So I reached out to Stacy and I asked her if she'd be interested in, in joining the team and, you know, maybe spending some time with me to see if we were a good fit. And we were. So, uh, so she and I got to talk in a couple weeks back and we thought it would be a great idea uh, for hers as somebody who has gone through uh, my programs, my techniques, and, and was a community follower to share some of the lessons that, that, that she had, that she, she realized. And so I thought, what, what a great way to, to bring that to you. So we'll spend you know, 20 minutes or so just kind of going back and forth with some key points that she wants to share. And I'm thinking that you, these messages are really going to resonate with you because you uh, are probably encountering what she encountered. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring her up and uh, hope, you know, hopefully uh, this is, by the way, this is also serving as a little practice uh, because I want to turn live office hours into a call-in show as well. So, so you know, who knows? Next couple of weeks, you got you guys might be doing this with me, and uh, and 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 maybe I'll be able to help you this way as well. So let's let's see if I can get her up here with me. There she is. <laughs> Give me a hidey hi. Let me know everything's good. Hey there. Hey. Okay. Everything is good. I uh, let me let me just check. Make sure that that her beautiful face pops up on on. <laughs> YouTube stream, which is on a little bit of a delay, and then we'll get we'll get right to it. Mm. All right, I'm guessing that I'm guessing that everything is fine. But okay, so Stacy is our content director. Effectively, she mm -hmm. manages the communities. That is that is her her background. She's done it in a, in a few different places. Uh, the one thing, interestingly, and then I, I want to me mention this about her background to you is it's not as if she did a lot of this in the influencer space. 
or, mm-hmm. uh, in, in the coaching and, and training space that I'm in. But I, as a, a an employer who recognizes that it's your foundational abilities to do something uh, mm-hmm. are far more important than your specific skills that you have in relation to doing a specific job within a specific type of company for a particular type of product or whatever it is. So I, I, I can't, I can't uh, harp on that message enough. And I especially think it's a big, uh, important point right now, as a number of you are in industries that have been hit hard by the global crisis that we're in. So realize that there are employers out there that recognize this. It's up to you to find them. But all right, so let's let's get on to Stacy. So I, I want I want to I want to give her a softball question here because we don't kind of want to ease her into this uh number one can we give her a big shout out for for jumping in and supporting you guys and being willing to offer this up and i guess my first question to her is you know stacy what would be the the really the number one thing kind of if if you could only give one piece of advice to these folks based on what you learned going through your search last year before you jumped into mm-hmm. mile walk you know what would that be and i'm going to get out of the way let her talk and then i'll i'll float back up here in a, in a minute but let's let's give her a chance to to take the floor um thank you so much i've really learned a lot and i i look back at my experience and i as I shared with you, I feel like I have a lot to offer because if I could tell someone what it is that I now know, I would basically share my main point is to follow the process. It absolutely works and not to skip step because I certainly had cherry picked and step and that did not work for me very well. So, 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 so hang, hang tight here. Let me, let me, let me get, let me get back into, uh, in, in, into this. So when you say, you know, when you say follow the process, so what, mm-hmm. what do you really, what do you really mean by that? We all, we know that there are, uh, a lot of different steps, but, but mm-hmm. number one, I think that not everybody looks at job searching as a process. So, so when Stacy's sharing with you a process, you know, when I look at it, I think about you need to know what you want, where you're going. Uh, you need to know what you need. You need to have a resume so you can market yourself and so on and so forth. But not everybody really looks at it as a process. A lot of people think it's, you know, slap, slap a resume together and then, and then you know, send it on out. So maybe add a little color to what that is about the process, what you meant there. Sure. I'll say that I was so excited about my resume, and yes, we did do my resume review, um, which was really helpful. So I unfortunately skipped a little bit of what we teach in the job search movement, as well as just in your lessons as well, of really networking and job hunting for things that I definitely skipped. And I was just so, I was so eager to get my resume out there and blasting it out there was not the way to go. So I definitely missed some of the main steps of networking. I was afraid to respond to some of my people within my network as far as, or not respond, I was afraid to reach out to them because they were very connected to my employer at the time. So that was a little scary. And I really wasn't understanding the whole boss hunting technique as far as looking for possibilities, which I wish I had done because I really didn't see what I felt I was qualified for up there on in the APS. All right, let me jump let me jump back in. Let me jump back in here with uh with you. So so I think so is it fair to say uh that you know you you some of the things that we stress, you know, that I stretch in my te- my teaching mm-hmm. about you know, a lot of people, they, they see the obvious stuff, right? That, you know, put a resume together, kind of submit it to an employer and so on. It's, it's, it's kind of like the, the publicized way of how we want you to apply for a job when, when the simple fact is a lot of the things that we teach, and I know a lot of these people that are here with us today and, and in the community or watching this on the recording, they know how much I, I stress that, that it, while that may be the, the known way to go about it, 
you've got to put these pieces together and you have to figure out you know where it, along the, these processes to actually invest your time because not all activities are, are created equal so if 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 if, if you're hearing Stacy like I'm hearing Stacy what she's saying well I wasn't spending the time doing some of these other activities like networking boss hunting and even though I might have been been uh, been a little bit handicapped from having a good network of people that I know through my employer what, you mm -hmm. know, I've got to make sure as a job seeker that I'm putting my energy into activities that yield results. So I'd love to hear, you know, maybe a little bit more on that. So, so that, that, you know, Stacy shared with me a second point about, you know, what, the process is one thing, but then when you get inside the process, allocating your time accordingly to the right activity. So not all activities are created equal. You could be spending a lot of time what you think is a, a, a lot of effort, right? I'm, hey, I'm working mm -hmm. hard at this, mm -hmm. but I'm not yeah. getting the results. Let's let's hear from her about, you know, how, how would you, what would you share about that as far as once you, if you were following the press, actually doing the steps about allocating your time? Well, I'll share with you part of my mistake that I made. Was I definitely went down the ATF rabbit hole and I saw things and I thought they were close enough and, I spent way too much time getting matched up with job scan, making sure my resume was, you know, scoring very well and making any adjustments I needed. But I wish I had not spent so much time and I spent all of my time into the ATF, which was very frustrating. I would even say demoralized just because you would get little bites back but not really enough. So again, focusing on the right activity was really important. And I, I didn't fully comprehend that. I didn't also see that my situation was very much very much applicable. I was thinking, well, you know, that's probably for others. But no, it, it, it's what you say, Andy. I mean, everyone is pretty much experiencing the same thing. And that is what you're teaching. And that's what your overall process really helps with. So I think, again, for me, spending so much time in the ATS, customizing my, my base resume, looking for it with four well for the various jobs I did see that were, you know, okay, I was just them on and rather than try to go outside of what was being put out there publicly and, again, really boss hunt and look and try to go for possibilities that were out there that I didn't even know. I, I hear you. Hey, I have a, a, a couple things. Let me let me jump in here. While I um, I, I think we're getting some echo on your uh, on your audio. Can you do me a favor? Just check uh, your you probably have a screen open on YouTube. Can you check to make sure that your YouTube stream is muted? That might it is. It is. Mm -hmm. OK, because I, I can hear the echo. I think others can hear the echo, too. All right. Well, hopefully we can we can manage. But one one other one other question here. The um, the the. Uh, Okay, so you, you you've got uh, anything we can do with there's an echo. Yeah, I I I, I hear the echo. Okay, so so one of the other things about um, you know about about this, so you got the process. You mentioned maybe inside the the steps that you're taking, maybe not doing and putting effort in into the right ones the right way, or or expending energy on those activities that are going to yield the high results. But also, then when you actually, one thing you mentioned to me about like, when I actually got an interview on the line. Okay, so I went through the steps, regardless of how I got that, whether it was through the applicant tracking system, or or not. Um, can you comment on you know kind of that that roller coaster you were going through as you know the the ups and downs of getting something you know getting a fish on the line spending your time reeling it in and before you comment let me see if i can i'm wondering if maybe there's a setting on my end that's the mute there all right try i'm not sure uh why we're echoing but uh all my all my sound is is muted but go ahead give give that a try let me see if i could do something here on on my end so so give it a roll Sh share that with the with the crew sure so for me, when I did have an interview, I basically was going really deep in my interview prep and I was not also continuing to job search at all. So I basically was an either or kind of a candidate, I guess. I was either job searching or I was preparing for an interview. And when I was prepared for an interview, I would go very 
and make sure I was fully ready and I enjoyed going from, you know, interview to interview, which was wonderful, but I did not basically continue to get people in the, um, I did not get my, my job applications in there. So then I didn't have more interviews to go after, to go, go and attend um, after I went through the whole process. So I, it was a very, it was a very slow drip. And when I finally would continue to job search again, again, I would get another slow drip, but not being consistent with the overall job searching was definitely a miss on my part. Again, I was either fully in the job search mode or fully in the interview mode and never didn't really ha have that balance of continuing the activities. And um, I think that for me, it was also very, it was very hard because it would take a while, obviously, to get a response back from somebody for the next interview invite. So all that time, all that lag that I had was, again, just really frustrating. And it just took probably far too long than it should have taken. Okay, so uh, maybe. May I hope that audio might have been a little bit better. I think there are there are like eight settings <laughs> turned on the right way. So I said, let me tell you, my probably my fault. Um, but wait, but so so I hope that resonates with you guys because you know one of the things that that uh, we're going to talk about every day next week if you're going to be be joining us for the job search challenges, and, and I I keep I keep harping on this is you got to have a steady output. Mm -hmm. of reach outs because you get emotionally attached to mm -hmm. something that you you know you get on the line you get an interview and one of the things i see on my youtube channel as well as inside the job search boot camp with the folks that are are reaching out to us for for help is hey you know they're not getting back to me hey it was going great but they're not moving fast enough and 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 so you know the message i think stacy's sharing and i would certainly share with all of you is that do not stop sending out yeah. your your reach outs, your 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 messages, your networking messages, and your applications, and your boss hunting letters, and those kind of things. I think these are the three, you know, big keys that I would also say to you. You know, there there is a process; it works together. There is, you know, within the process, not all steps are created equal. So make sure you're balancing, you're doing the right things the right way, and you're putting your energy in to the high yield activities. That's like Pareto's principle where you've got that 80-20, right? You shouldn't be spending a lot of time putting your mm -hmm. resume into applicant tracking systems. You should be putting it, uh, you should be reaching out with thoughtful messages. And then the third thing is just don't stop. Right, the, mm -hmm. the the momentum that you build, you know, the expression we have in sales is, well, y you know, you don't know uh, it's time to prospect until it's too late, and and that's mm -hmm. that's something that uh, I think you guys find out as you you go into, you know, you have your own timetable to job search, but employers have their own timetable, they and they're trying to manage lots of candidates and 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 their schedule and their time and their interviewers, but don't you let that interfere with your momentum. Right. So, so I, I hope that helps. I, I, I want to, can we give, we give Stacy a shout out for, for, for showing up and, and offering that up to you guys. And I would love to, you know, if you have questions for her, we can pull her back up, you know, throughout the show today. Um, you know, if you, if you're, you're curious as to, you know, what she experienced additionally from those three points that she wanted to share. Um, and, 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 you know, in the upcoming weeks, we'll probably have messages out to you guys to join me up here, you know, on the screen and, mm -hmm. and share your stories and, and ask me your questions directly. And I'd, I'd like to make this even more engaging, you know, than, than we usually have. So can we get, at least give her a high, high 10, uh, you know, for, <laughs> for, for braving this out and, uh, dealing with my technical snafus. But uh, just, I, I want to thank you again for for not only sharing this, but for being a great part of the team and helping everybody, you know, in our in our community. I know a lot of these people have gotten to know you a little bit, and um, I'm sure they appreciate. It. Hope hopefully they'll they'll share that in the uh, in the in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I'm, I'm here for here to happy to answer questions here or in the community. Great stuff. Great stuff. All right, let me. I'm gonna park you on the side here. And I'm going to come back up and uh, let me see if I can. There we go. I'll mute you. 
and hope hope you guys enjoyed that. Sorry about the echoing. I'm sure that was that was my fault, but uh, hopefully we uh, you know that was there was some some good value there for you. And speaking of good value, uh, I got a couple quick announcements, and then I want to I want to go into uh, the Q and A. Uh, first thing is. We've got a, uh, well, it is now, what we because this is year two, we're calling it my annual live five-day job search challenge. If you are not familiar uh, with, with the job search challenge, uh, it is something that we did last November. It is something that I offered uh, throughout the beginning months uh, of this year where people could, could take this challenge. It's five parts. On Monday, I'm going to give you the blueprint of what this challenge is, and it's all aimed at doing a couple things for you. Number one, it's in general teaching you how to actually job search. Okay, so so applying through the applicant tracking system to me is not job searching. It's applying for jobs. There is a huge difference. Just like job changing is not job searching. Right? A lot of you may have changed jobs in the past, but you getting called by a friend or a recruiter, stopping over, interviewing, and taking a job is actually not job searching. That's changing jobs, and, and that's getting a job interview. Job searching is bringing yourself to market to surface opportunities and truly doing that. And you know, We talked in the, in the package there about not all the activities in the process yield the same level of results. Right? Some are going to give you a better ROI than others. The job search challenge is about doing everything that gives you the ROI and piecing it all together. So Monday, we're going to go through the blueprint. Tuesday, we're going to go into detail about how to identify your target companies, which is an element that's very important and a, and a great way for you to run your job search. Then we'll teach you how to, how to identify people and target people inside the organizations that you want to go, th- to go into or potentially investigate as employers. And on Thursday, we'll talk about sending your messages. What is the content that should be included? Just because you have a company and just because you found a person doesn't mean that they're going to be interested in returning your response or getting back to you. So how do you put compelling messages together to elicit the responses that you want? Get them compelled to act on your behalf, which is ultimately what you want. And then on Friday, I'm going to tell you all the stuff that's going to go wrong and how to overcome it. So I'll be with you every single day. I believe it's about an hour and a half, Monday through Thursday. On Friday, it'll be a couple hours because that that teaching portion on Friday is going to be longer because there's a lot of problems that you're going to encounter. Then if you are interested in showing up, you can just show up on my YouTube channel or Facebook or LinkedIn. Uh, But if you want the follow-along workbook, you need to be registered Uh, Very simply, all you need to do is send us your email and your name and just officially register so we can deliver you your workbook via email, which we are going to do on Sunday night. So so if you are already registered, whether you registered three weeks ago or three minutes ago, uh, we're going to give you your workbook on on Monday night and then or Sunday night. Then what we're going to do each morning is I'm going to send you an email with additional information, and it would be a great idea for you to grab those emails and you might want to copy some of the information that I have in each of the emails because I'm going to be s- explaining the psychology behind what it is I want you to do. So I'm going to give you more written material about what you're going to be learning that day. So I wouldn't blow off those emails. I would keep an eye out for them each morning and then there'll be a little story in there as well from from somebody who used the challenge and what happened to them really good stuff we've i've really punched it up from last year i mean last year was damn good but this is this is going to be even better and that's the way it should be Uh, of course with the dogs barking in the middle of my in the middle of my stories um okay so that's that's next week now if you are in my job search boot camp which is the premium signature program that i have Every day, Monday through Thursday next week, after we do the public show, we have a live private group coaching session just for people in that program. So if you are interested in getting in that program, it's on special through November 25th, but there's no reason to wait till November 25th because you're going to lose out on all that extra coaching that I'm going to give you next week. I'm expecting a lot of people to be at this challenge next week. So if you want to make sure to get your questions answered live, it would be a good idea to be in the boot camp because we're going to break out after Monday through Thursday. And then we have another group coaching session on Wednesday, the 25th, right before Thanksgiving in, in the U.S., 
So I hope you jump in. And if you are in the boot camp, you, you do not need to register for the Job Search Challenge public shows. And you also have all that content already inside your training system. But you do need to RSVP for our private group coaching sessions because those are going to be done on Zoom. And we want to make sure to get you the, the invitation and the access uh, to that. You just need to, to RSVP once and we'll, we'll, get you, we'll get you links and calendar invites and all that good stuff. So it's going to be a ton of fun. All right. If you're loving this, click the like button. Share the dang thing. Um, for those of us in the boot camp, how does next week's challenge fit into the program? What should we be doing? Okay. Um, I'll get to that here in a minute. But hope hope that helps. And one other announcement before we go into, into the uh, Q&A. Uh, tomorrow, you might have got a message yesterday from me about networking. Tomorrow, I have my monthly leadership uh, a coaching session, private group coaching session with people in my leadership subscription. I am covering networking, which is uh, by design because this month is all about networking. The Job Search Challenge is about networking for the job seekers, but people that want to grow in their career, I am going through all of my networking principles all of the different ways to look at networking, mechanically how to do it, how to build your system, what to say, all that good stuff. That's tomorrow at 11 a.m. Central in the U.S. If you can't make it live, you do get the recording and a boatload of other things when you're in that program. So if you're interested in that program, check that out. Kara can put that in the, uh, in, in the chat, which we will, will now go to so I can take some questions. Um, and I, I, uh, I got Phil Drake here. Uh, hey to you from Alaska. Hope it's not too cold. Uh, Juliana from Belize. I know it's not cold there. All right. Phil Drake's got a question. Tricky brand question. Is it better to have an eight-year gap on my resume and LinkedIn or keep a successful company with a bad reputation that led to having a felony just closed its doors recently? Phil, I'm, uh, I'm actually not entirely sure. I've got uh, command of what it it is that happened to you, uh, but this I will say: um, Is it better to have an eight-year gap on my resume? No. It, if you were employed, put the employer down. You said it's a company with a bad reputation. That doesn't matter. It was still your employer that led to having a felony. I don't know if that was you had a felony or they had a felony, but any which way, put it down. And even though it closed its doors, I would still leave it on the resume. There is no way having an eight-year gap and then, because what's the first question I'm going to ask in an interview? What have you been doing for the last eight years? How are you going to explain that? And when you get into, well, I was with this company, it has a bad reputation, and I or they got had a felony, somebody inside had a felony, um, that is not going to go over well. So I wouldn't do that. So I would put the... I would put the, the um, the the company on your resume and and when they ask about the organization or you or what you did there uh it's up to you to package it positively about what you learned and it's unfortunate that the company recently closed its doors how much you want to get into about why that is 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 up to you i will always tell you the spirit is the less you say the better don't over explain things uh but that's the way i would go uh with with that Agnesica, is that? I hope I don't know if I I pronounced it correctly. I really hope I did. Uh, hey to you, and you've changed uh, your career four years ago. Uh, finance to HR. Thank you for telling me that. Um, no job for one year due to redundancy. Had a few second interviews. Always hear the same. You're a strong candidate, but we offered a job to somebody. What to do? I would do nothing differently. I would, I would, and I'm not being funny, I would come to the job search challenge next week and because um, just the spirit of the challenge is all about you taking control and I always talk about your search as a funnel, okay? So very simply, that there's the top of the funnel. The top of the funnel are all those reach outs and possibilities, whether they come to you, whether you go get them, whether your friend calls you, a recruiter calls you, you apply, whatever it is, 
The more stuff you feed into the top of the funnel, quality leads, so to speak, meaning you are reaching out to bosses, you are reaching out to human resources people, you are reaching out to recruiters. Uh, even if you are applying online, which I don't recommend, but at least if you are applying, more opportunities that you can start with and then some of those filter down, uh, some you don't hear from, some say no thank you, some of them lead to interviews, and then one of them or multiple will lead to a job offer, one of which you'll take. My, If you're asking me what you should do or what I recommend you do, it's I recommend you not worry about that stuff. You obviously made a transition successfully. You're a strong candidate as they've let you know. You just haven't found the right one. Well, the best way to, 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 to do that is to, to stuff more opportunities into the top of your funnel, meaning reach out more. If you do the job search challenge, you'll have 15 opportunities a week. You'll have 30 in two weeks, right? You'll have you have 45. You'll have, not, you'll have so many possibilities if you just stay consistent. That's what I would do. And I believe we have a video out there somewhere. Maybe Stacy can pop that in uh, about, you know, uh, Stacey, the, the funnel video, what, whatever you titled that, uh, pop, pop that in the chat and, and just notate that that's my number one piece of advice to all of you is that the initial reach outs is that's, that's 99.9% .9 of you. That's the issue. It's not that you're not equipped. It's not that you're not great. All right. So I hope that helped. That's, that's a great one. Uh, we had a question about uh, from the boot camp, or for those of us in the boot camp, how does next week's challenge fit into the program? Um, you you have access to the job search challenge. It aligns to the third module of the boot camp. Uh, you are welcome to take advantage of all the live shows next week, or you can watch the content that's already in your program. And where it fits into the program is it's that's the aspect of bringing yourself to market. If you're asking where does it fit, like what do I have to do? You don't have to do anything. You just show up next week. And uh, but you do if you do want the private coaching after the after the shows, which is independent of the job search challenge, uh, you just RSVP for that. All right, John filing. I was let go from a company in August. The same company now has an open position. I reached out. Uh, to the hiring manager, I have a call with her to talk about it. Do I treat this call any differently than a normal interview? Love this question. Uh, John, honestly, uh, Stacy is going to get you a video that I want you to watch. And I, uh, I said this last week, not that I expect everybody to remember it, but do you remember when I said every move has a counter move? Well, the video, John, that I want you to watch is how to beat the internal job candidate. Why do I want to watch? Why do I want you to watch that? That's counterintelligence, basically. So you don't get beat out by anybody externally because effectively you are an internal candidate, even though you got let go a couple months ago. So you don't need to treat it any differently. I would want you to behave, uh, number one, the first part, almost start and prep and go in like it's a brand new opportunity. The advantage you have is you understand what's under the covers, okay? So you have more intel and you can ask smarter questions. So that's the second thing. The third third thing is then check out that video and make sure that nobody nobody snookers you from the outside and, and, and make sure that you are doing the things that I'm telling the outside candidate to do to beat you. Okay, so so moves and counter moves. Just make sure you watch that. How to beat the internal uh, job candidate is the video. It's on YouTube. Uh, so I wouldn't do anything prep wise differently other than watch that and make sure you're ready for those things. Great stuff. That's awesome. That's an awesome question. We that's a we uh, we don't get a lot of that where where people are going back at a later date. Sometimes we say, hey, I'm going back a couple years later. Or I got a call back. But this is this is like right away. And um, and I, so that's what that's what I would do there. All right. Let me see. Claudia. Took a job out of need, lower pay, 40s. Uh, I don't know if you're in your 40s or the pay was in the 40s. Now have a job offer. For, oh, okay. Now have a job offer for 60. The range is 51 to 73. 
I want 70, benefits okay, country, job. The job is only for one year. Do I take the risk or play it safe or stay at my job? Okay, so Claudia, every week I get no less than 10 questions about what I should do always based on your personal situation. What I might do could be different than what you might do or what I would recommend. Here's what I would always say to you. Much like Stacy was saying in the package we just did, everything fits together. There's no shortcutting of the process. A big part of the process that most people miss is the upfront taking stock of what they currently have, what they want, what the delta is, and how closely aligned the new job is. Now, I understand what you're saying here is 40s, 60, 70, whatever. That's not what you have. The, 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 that's a component of what you have. So the, the, the dollars you currently earn are, are in, you know, just one element of everything that you have. Who, what I get to do, who I get to do it with, stability, industry, interest in, in, in what I'm doing each day, career trajectory, all those other good things that matter. Now, it, it, part of the the new offer is, well, if I was offered 60, but I want 70, the range is irrelevant. Okay. So if, what if I would have told you the range is 51 to 60, here's 60. You would be thinking you're at the top end of the range. And would you still be asking yourself the question, well, should I push to 70? I don't really care about any of that. If you want 70, you go and you make the argument according to all the insight I gave you on all the salary negotiation stuff about how you actually do that. Now, a part of negotiating it from 60 to 70 has more to do, people, remember this, has more to do with what's already done than what you're about to do at the moment. Because what I'm about to do at the moment, which is go ask for more money, is only go, I'm only going to be as effective going forward in the next few minutes or few hours or few days as I was in the days or weeks that I interviewed to make the case that I'm worth 70. Okay, so that's tactical. Now, theoretically, what should you do? I don't, I, I, I can't tell you whether to stay or go or whatever. It has to, you have to look at the requirements that you have and how closely what you have aligns to it and this new opportunity and how closely it aligns to it. But I will direct you as a final point to a video uh, called How to Choose the Right Job which I think will help you tremendously. And one of the things that, uh, for those of you that are contemplating the Job Search Bootcamp that's in the bootcamp is in gross detail. We take you through the self-awareness stuff, how to, how to identify your needs, how to align your questions, what questions to ask, how to investigate it, how to make the comparisons, how to look at, look at the information objectively and make a decision like this. Uh, but without knowing all the inner workings and, and having a, an understanding of where you want to go and what fits better, I can't tell you which you should choose, but I will always point you to the process I would use. And so if you, if you, if you check out that free video, uh, how to choose the right job, or you jump into the boot camp, then, then you'll, you'll have more assets to help you do that. That is a great question, um, but not one I can answer as far as should you do this or should you do that. But I hope the process will help you. That's awesome. Good for you. I mean, that's really nice. And you join the challenge. Awesome. And remember, the challenge next week, Claudia and, and, and everybody, you know, there's, I'm spending five days with you next week, right? And I'm going to be live like 15 hours of next week. <laughs> okay. Right. It's just like three hours a day and half of it with the public and half of it with my boot campers. But that's one sliver so Stacy was talking about, well, there's a process and there's all these steps in between. That job search challenge is one sliver because you could be successfully doing the job search challenge, except you could be pursuing the wrong companies if you don't do the stuff in the beginning properly. And then when you get in there and you actually get interviews, you could be successful at interviews you shouldn't even be in because they don't align to what it is you truly want. And if you don't have all of these steps working together and that domino effect working in your favor, you're, you're gonna be successful at the wrong things or you might not even be successful at those things because you weren't doing the early steps correctly. So I cannot stress this enough. It sounds like a lot, and you might be thinking, I'm giving away the house. I'm giving you a sliver of what's inside in five days. So, so keep that in mind. I just I want I want to go back to the point Stacy was making in the package is 
you you got to make sure that this stuff is working in tandem. So wait, so Claudia, I'm glad you're coming to the job search challenge. For all of you, I just want to make sure you recognize that just because I gave you a resume template, just because I gave you a resume workshop, just because I'm teaching you how to job search, these are pieces of everything that's got to work together. Okay? But I'm, I'm, we're going to have a rocking time. We will. Rami. Two open positions at the same company. I don't know who is the hiring manager. I got the HR head work email. What's best to mention in the email? First question. All right, first question. I would do one of two things, two routes here you can take. Either are okay with me, you choose whichever is better for you. If I see two positions, I look at the one I want more, okay? I try to find that hiring official and I take my best shot and I go right to them because you got a better chance of a hiring official or a potential boss getting back to you than an HR person. Remember, there's a pecking order. Boss is more likely to get back to you. Then the HR and recruiting team is likely to get back to you. Then the applicant tracking system is likely to get back to you. Okay, One is more probable than the next is probable than the next. Okay, That's the first route. I would try that. If I don't hear anything back from the boss I target, I might try to find the other boss and target that person for the other position. That's the way I would go. And I would be really patient because I would be reaching out to multiple companies every day. So I'm not going to sweat the fact that I can't wait three weeks in order to let those people get back to me or let me let it play out. Remember this too as a side point. The longer term you think, the better your short term decisions become. The more short term you think, the more poor those decisions become. What do I mean? Well, if I say, eh, 30 days. I'm giving myself 30 days with that company to go through the hoops that Andy told me I should go through, and I'm not going to worry about it because in 30 days, I'm going to have 90 more companies I'm going to reach out to. Okay? That's how I think. But, uh-oh, I'm panicking. I, I have two opportunities. Uh-oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose this opportunity. I better send my resume to the boss, to the other boss, to the HR person, and shove it in the applicant tracking system. All that's bad. Okay? let it play out. So so, so that's what I would do. That's your first route and a little echo on the psychology there and why I think that's a better way to go. The second route is you go to the HR person. You say, hey, loving your company. Notice these couple of positions that I'm very interested in. I'm not sure which I'd be interested in more because I I only know based on what the job descriptions tell me, I'd be interested in learning about these or any other positions you think I would be suitable for, blah, 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 right? So it's a quasi uh, application cover letter, no job opening cover letter. It's a blend It's a, it's a blend of all the Andy cover letters that you got to work in that you send to the HR person and then you just reference the air, you know, hey, my background is strong because... And then hopefully these two positions are somewhat related, okay? So if they're like, if one's over there and one's over there, that's a bad idea to combine them into one message. You can, you can conflate your message and refer to both jobs if the jobs are similar in nature and you would enjoy doing both of them. But if they're wildly different, like product engineer over there and sales engineer over there, while those could seem similar, well, one is a customer facing, pilot building, all working with the sales team type of role. And the other one is an internal, uh, spec it out, pound it out, you know, work with the engineers kind of role. I wouldn't be p- putting those in the same email. So you've got you've to gotta be careful, but you could take one of both routes depending on which of those suits you best. And, and that's the way I would go. I love that question. Uh, I, I love that question. It, it, when, when I say I love that question, it's because there's a trickiness to it that, that you, don't, you don't always know and it's not intuitively obvious and there's a lot of hiccups that you can introduce if you don't handle it properly. That's, a, that's just a great question. And I, I, just, I wish you a lot of luck with it, Rami. That's, that's really good stuff. And I would love to know, you know, pop it on my YouTube channel somewhere or maybe one of these shows about what you did and how it turned out. I'd love to hear that. And how long should I wait for the job offer from HR? Um, I I didn't. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not sure. Uh, you say job offer? Do you mean job interview? Uh, I, I'm not sure about that second one. I'm not sure. Uh, it's a little confusing. 
thinking, hey, Andrew, I love your videos. Appreciate your advice. I'd like to put them on while I walk in the park. I love that. Do you know, do you guys want, want to laugh? I listen to myself in the car. I listen to myself on my walks, not my runs, because I would bore myself to death. Probably, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but like, I, I, I replay it. So I replay my advice to you. So number one, uh, I'm critiquing myself. Number two, I want to make sure that when I'm asked the same question by somebody else in the future, because you guys have similar problems, you just have them at different uh, dates and times, right? In, 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 in my life, right? You have them when you have them in your life and you encounter them because there's basically a finite number of issues that you can, you can encounter. So I'm always thinking about better ways to tell you what to do and making sure that I'm covering all my bases. So I, I, I love to hear that though. I appreciate that. Michael Moore, my boot camper, how are you? So Denkin, you got a question here. After several rounds of interviews for a senior position, I got to meet a direct stakeholder to check we match before they close off the process. The conversation went well. I haven't heard back since. Uh, it's been three weeks. I know, uh, A, the process has been kind of slow. There were two more, more experienced candidates than me. Is there anything, uh, anything I can do to strengthen my position? Well, number one, uh, when you, you met with the stakeholder, I would ask the stakeholder and I would have looped back with the recruiter or whoever's quarterback in the process. What's the next step? By when am I going to hear from you? And who am I going to hear from? Is that you or somebody else? Okay, you got to know that because he could say it'll be 30 days or she could say it'll be 30 days, in which case there's nothing to do uh, other than I probably would have dropped some handwritten cards in the mail to, to, to be top of mind and give them something physical to open to separate yourself. Uh, at this point, though it's been three weeks, I would call them, not email them. I would call the recruiter and just say, hey, I recognize that there were some other candidates. I wanted to check in to see if there was any update or if there's not an update, when you think there might be an update and, and when you will get back to me, something like that. And if you call them and leave that voicemail, then I would immediately send an email to the same effect, but I would not do it the other way around. I would not email first and then call. Don't do, by the way, anybody, don't ever do that. You call first, then email second. Call first, email second, why? The email that you're sending in the wake of a voicemail is a to-do for them so that they don't forget. You do not, it, uh, done the other way, it's construed as being pesty, okay? So, well, you sent me an email, you didn't even wait for me to respond to you, and now you're calling me, right? Hey, I left you a message, and then you want it in their inbox as a to-do because poorly, most people use their inbox as a to-do list. So you want it, in, which is never advisable. And if you're my leadership program, you know that. So so just, just keep that in mind. I hope that helps. And I wish you luck. I'm, I'm, I'm pulling for you. Spider09. Quit a bad job, boss, four years ago. Chased a couple of dreams. I love that. Unsuccessful, not making money. That is not, that is not true. Uh, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to read the rest of this just yet. I want to tell you, just because you did not make money does not mean you were unsuccessful. Uh, I lost a ton of money when I wanted to become an online coach. Ton of money. Okay? Would you say that the first two years that I invested in doing this was unsuccessful because I didn't make any money. What I would say to you is the metric you're looking at might be messed up, okay? I looked at the number of lives I was changing, the infrastructure I was building, the assets I was creating, and that I had to go through steps in order to figure out how to make money, okay? So there's a huge difference. All right, so, so number one, Inspire, I wish I knew who you were. Uh, I mean, I might know who you are, I just don't know it's Spider09. But I just want you to know that I, if you did not get the results that you wanted in the experiences by chasing your dreams, the one thing that I would say to you is, number one, it's how you interpret what happened. And I'm guessing that even though those might have looked as failures to you, I'm guessing they were raging successes if you get your perspective dialed in and you look at the metric that you can truly look at to see what it is that you did and what happened as a result of you doing what you did. Just because you did not make money at it does not mean you were a failure. 
Okay, so it, it usually means you didn't have the right success metric. Don't get me wrong. I understand you got to make money to survive, but I would not. The reason I'm I'm spending so much time on this is because I would not be going. I don't even know what the question is that you're going to ask me, but I would not be going into a job interview explaining that I was unsuccessful by chasing my dreams. I would be talking all over myself about how successful this experience was because having the experience was the success. At a minimum, that was the success. And I'm guessing you had other successes when you reflect on it and look at it. And if you have to talk about that in a job interview, which you will inevitably have to do, the, the accents that you put on it about the successes and the experiences that you gained is what will make the difference between you getting a job and not getting a job. Okay, enough of that. What is it that you, you want to ask me? Have taken career quizzes, assessments, inward reflection, no idea what to do next. Any advice? There's a couple of things that you can do. There is that video that I mentioned earlier to Claudia, I think it was, about, or maybe it was Claudia, about how to choose the right job. Uh, if it wasn't Claudia, it was somebody, but I would, I would look at that. Uh, the second thing that you can do is I have a uh, video series on my YouTube channel uh, called the first five steps to career success, like how to get your career on track. That's something that that does free, and the video is free. And then the other thing uh, that I would do is uh, if you are um, if you are inclined to spend a few bucks, it's not with me, and I don't have a partnership with this company. But I know a number of people in the Mile Walk Academy. I've recommended this that they try it, and they've had good results. Most of them, ninety percent, have had 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 been very happy with it. It's called you science, Y O U science.com. I think it might be like 29, 30 bucks and you can put a lot of information in and your degrees and other things you're interested in and things like that. And I, I think it has a nice profiling, uh, algorithm. So that might be helpful. I don't endorse it. I'm, I'm educating you that it's out there. That's it. And I would check it out and give it a try and um, you know, depending on your situation, 30 bucks might be a lot, it might be nothing, but it, it might be worth the data point. The other thing is in, uh, and then, okay, so those are, those are free, modest cost to somebody else, and then in my job search bootcamp, uh, we have a number of different sessions and a module, one on career changing, if you wanna look at that, there's four stages to career changing success, there's 12 steps, you can't skip them. Okay, so I use this formula that I've reverse engineered for you to make two career changes in my life. Okay, so 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 you can you can check that out. I also have the first module in the main portion of the boot camp, which talks about a lot of this, gets you on the straight and narrow. And I have a specialty session in the first module of the boot camp about ways to create direction in your career. And if you are not certain how to triangulate the different lanes you ought to go in to bring yourself to market. It's a beauty. And it, it basically will help you get in the right, kind of in the right lane. Uh, and, and, but that's in the paid program if, uh, you, know, if you want to do that. So, uh, so that's, that's something you can consider. But I would try those. I would try those. But I hope you take heed in my advice about you not being unsuccessful. I'm sure there are raging successes in chasing your dreams. Daniel Vindatelli, good to see you. And Bob, my boot camper and leader, I think, I think, uh, wait, I see that. I don't know if I catch up there. It's not quite there yet. Great to see you, buddy. Medina, morning to you. Are there any specific cultural differences one should pay attention to when job searching in Germany, US, UK, or France? Yes. Yes, 100%. So, so you know where I get this from. Um, I've been working a long time. And when I was a consultant, uh, I worked internationally, so I worked in different countries. As a recruiter, I recruited mostly for positions inside the United States. But as a career coach, I've helped people in more than 100 countries, and of which many came from European countries like the UK, Germany, and France. So just because I'm in the US doesn't mean anything. As a matter of fact, uh, only 48% of the Mile Walk Academy is inside the U.S. So more than half of, of our community statistically, that's everything. That's paying students. That's people who get the interview intervention book 
deal that's people in the community that's the the ratio and relationship of people on my youtube channel and the watchers of the videos and those kind of things it's all it's all data that we we see so i'm continually coaching people on how to approach things in different countries so i'm not going to go through what all the cultural differences are in each of those countries but i will say that if you are searching in those countries you need to get local knowledge of what's expected as just an easy example like in in germany for example they want a picture most of the resume reviews that i've done for boot campers whether they were german locals or whether they were people moving to germany for whatever reason a lot of people are moving to germany we had somebody move from the uk to germany we had somebody move from france to germany we had somebody move from south korea to germany and 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 and, and those in switzerland as well picture on the resume they like it up there you have to put in data about uh your citizenship your visa status all these other things those are differences just on the resume uh, the things that they look for in your background could be different just the customs themselves uh, the interaction even inside the u.s there are cultural differences whether you are looking for work in new york in dallas in california in san francisco even in the state of california there are differences so so yes you need to become knowledgeable about what those are and i would be uh getting together with people in the local communities if you are in here, here's a great story uh, we had a woman, Rachel, uh, in the job search boot camp, and she was in South Korea and moving to Germany because she met the love of her life, and she was very senior, and I was helping her with a resume review, and we were going back and forth about this and that, and I said, hey, l let's pop a thing, uh, a, a request, in the Facebook group about resume templates, this and that, and the other thing, some other things. Within like an hour, we had 30 responses from people out of Europe, or actually somebody from the US whose sister lived in Germany got us to the place we actually needed to be. So people, they, they dismiss the power of the community and in tapping into people that are like-minded, that are willing to help. So I would, if I'm you, I'm reaching into people in the local communities and if you say well i don't know anybody in germany well i don't know anybody in germany either other than the people that are in the mile walk academy so we go to the community groups that is powerful and fast and the people are helpful because they're, they're they all know what it's like to be you so there's another plug for you know the the, the, the roi that comes with the, these things that you don't automatically think about and within an hour, we have what we need. And within a day, she has a resume. And a few weeks later, without speaking the language, she has a job, a big time job. So, so this is important that you guys are doing this. And if you're not in my community, my paying community, that is those, because you got to buy something, even if it's a book, uh, to to get into these communities. But it's 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 worth it. I hope that helps. Michael Moore. Is this age of predominantly Zoom interviews, what is the appropriate dress code? I love this question. So I would not do this. Uh, I, would, I would not be dressing in, um, you know, in, in a Sherbert colored shirt. Uh, but I would, if I was doing a Zoom interview, I would, number one, actually, let's broaden this question. So. When I go to any interview of any kind, obviously excluding a phone interview. So I'm going in a face-to-face. -face, I'm going into a coffee shop. I'm going into a Zoom video or whatever. Always ask, what's your preferred dress code? Now, what you could do is when I go face-to-face, -face, I automatically go suit and tie. If, 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 if you're a woman, I would go in a business suit or a, or a skirt suit or something appropriate but full business attire. That's automatic. Okay, now, if you, if you notice through your detection on the website or whatever, LinkedIn or whatever, it's a very casual group, like it's jeans, cutoffs, t-shirts, whatever. Then I would ask and just say, hey, uh, normally I would come to an interview in a suit. I always like to you know, dress the part, but I always like to you know, kind of blend. What's your dress code and do you have a preference of you know, that kind of thing? So you could open that up. Now, if you're doing a Zoom interview, instead of going like full suit and tie, which you certainly can do and nobody would hold it against you, you could say, uh, the same thing. Hey, I know we're doing this via Zoom. It would be my inclination to actually dress up in business attire, but you know, how, you, you know, what is your corporate dress code? 
use normally. And then you could align to that. If they say, well, we're, we're business casual, then what I might do is I might show up to the Zoom uh, interview in like a button down shirt with a sport coat or something like that, or maybe just a button down shirt or something of that nature. But I like to ask why it eliminates confusion. If you don't want to ask, then I go full on. I go full tilt until they tell, right? They're not going to hold that against you. But, you know, you showing up in a t-shirt and a sherbet color sweatshirt, that they might. So that's, that's my take there, Michael. Good luck on that, my friend. April J, flying Uber tuber. You guys are like tried and true week in and week out. Bonnie Boo from Colorado. Chris Reed. You know, I always smile when I see your name, Chris Reed. You know why. Nice person ever. Brandon, the detail guy. Hey to you. Or Cobb. You always make me smile too, my leader and my boot camper. Bonnie Boo, what do we got here? Let me see. Bobby Ashman is right up at the top. Okay, so we're, we're getting over to my other chat here. Hold on. Bonnie Boo, Andy, is it a strike against us if we do not answer the questions if I'm white, black, Indian, etc., or if I'm male, female, or do you have a disability? So, number one, uh, and I, 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 I want to say, in the United States, where I live, no employer should be asking you that. And if they do ask you that, uh, they're asking you for one of two reasons. Uh, number one, they're either going to hold it against you, or number two, it's going to work wildly in your favor. Meaning, hey, we would like to hire a minority, all right? So it would be helpful if you were a minority kind of thing. Either which way, I think it's hugely bad form. Now, if, um, if somebody asked me that question, I would say, that's an interesting question. Why do you ask? I literally, that's how I would respond. Why? Well, we all know they shouldn't be asking this stuff, okay? But what do I say? Assum always, assumptions are not your friend. If they say, well, you know, we're, 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 we like to make sure, if they actually respond, we like to make sure that we are hiring a diverse group of people uh, to join our company, which they may say. And even though I think they're kind of shits for asking you in the first place, that's at least not going to hurt you if you are, in fact, a minority. Okay, so, so and if you're not a minority, uh, that's just good to know. Either which way, I think it tells you something about the organization, right? And so, um, you know, when you say, well, does it hurt or, or help, uh, I don't know, based on what I just shared. But I, I don't like when employers ask the question. I think it's bad form in general, whether their heart is in the right place or not. All right, hope that helped. All right, Bob. Bob, my boot camper. Bob, my all-around great dude. Let's see what you got. Now we're over because this must have been right at 11 o'clock. If you guys wonder, like this is crazy because it took me like a month to figure this damn thing out. You know how I can put some of the questions up? Well, the integration, because we're streaming to so many different places and you're all, you all, wherever you are, this is probably good for you to know. If you're on Facebook or LinkedIn or YouTube, your when I start the live show, the integrated chat on the streaming software will collect all the chats and it'll put you in order. So if you're on Facebook and you enter a question, it's going to, you know, at 1102, it's going to go in the 1102 slot. So 1101 will be before you, 1103 will be after you. But I only get the ones from 11 o'clock on. So when I start the stream uh, using this streaming software. So anyway, that's why Bob gets his beautiful, handsome picture up there on the screen. All right. Target response rate for outgoing boss hunting emails before we need to go into troubleshooting mode. I am in troubleshooting mode the minute I hit send. Okay, so what, what do I mean by this? I get my three job search challenge, three companies a day, three people, three send, send messages in the direction. Now, they could be three boss hunts. They could be a boss hunt and two messages to friends to introduce you to somebody else. That's fine. But when I send a boss hunting cover letter, I watch what happens. I notate, I immediately notate which company, who did I send it to, what time of day did I send it, what day a week did I send it, 
what template did I use? Label your templates. That's boss hunting cover letter A. I know there's a job. It's the one where I'm going for Bob's a strategy guy, you know, senior chief strategy officer position. Right? Don't, 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 don't. Okay. Boom. Sent. All right. Now you're in analysis mode. Same day, I sent this boss cut, cutting uh, cover letter at noon to that company about, you know, uh, a consulting position and used the consultant one with no job opening, okay? I'm labeling all this, okay? And then I'm watching. You, you, I'm telling you, this, this, just for Bob, you should be going one for five, okay? Like, no doubt with your background. If you're not going one for five, then my first suggestion to you is your resume and 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 route in, uh, cover in, email in is not specific enough to how you can help them because you're strategists. So people can get lost in, well, I'm not sure how I apply his background to what it is I need. Okay, that's actually for you, your, will be your biggest issue. Okay, I'm not talking to the general public here. I'm just talking to Bob because Bob's a boot camper. I know his background. I know what he does, and I can tell him that. That the greatest likelihood that you will trip up, Bob, is because they have not connected the dot, not because you don't have a killer background. I'm not saying that to everybody. I'm saying that to Bob. Okay, so you don't go one for five, one for seven, something on the outside. I would be in massive troubleshooting mode, okay? Because you, and, and by the way, a no response is a response. So when I say you go one for five, one for seven, that means seven responses. But you should have an interview by that time, okay? So I would be watching along the way. And then I would want to look at what you were sending. I would, that, like, that's just... I'm telling you probability and odds based on your background and your position and where you fit in an organization that's the greatest likelihood that somebody will not respond to you. You did not connect the dot for them. It's not that they don't like your background. Okay, hope that helped. For the rest of you, well, you need to get in the boot camp and tell me who you are so I can help you. All right, hope that was a good one for you, my friend. CV, I, I hope that's how you pronounce your name. I'm looking forward to connecting up with you. Wayne Peterson. Uh, Bob, you're asking about the top three to five troubleshooting steps. Day five, job search challenge. It's already in training, but your number one troubleshooting step is, did I hit the right person and did I connect the dots? That, and then is my, then, okay, for you, Bob, did I hit the right person? Did I connect the dots? Does my resume clearly align to the dots I'm connecting for them? So you say, this is how I can help you. Does your resume say, this is how I can help you? Okay, you can't, you can't be over here saying, well, this is how I can help you and your resume doesn't scream the same thing. There, I talk about congruency. It, actually, this is, this is a really good point for everybody. When you are sending your messages, number one element of congruence, what is it I want? Okay. Who is it I'm sending to? Can they give that to me? Number three, is the material I'm sending them consistent with what I want, who I'm sending it to, and if they can give it to me? When they get back to me and they give me an interview, do my stories go back to what I want, what I've done, how I can help them? All that has to work together, okay? So if, if, if the chain breaks anywhere, then you don't get a job. The problem with the chain breaking is depending on where the chain is broken, you could waste a lot of time. What do I mean? Well, you might have a resume that they like, but but when you get into the interview process, your stories don't coincide, in which case you're in an interview that you blow. And you, and you think, oh, Andy, my interviewing skills are bad. I'm like, no, your alignment skills are bad, right? It has nothing to do with your ability to interview. It, you may have great stories that don't apply to what it is they want to know about you or you didn't know you needed to tell them. That's totally different than you're not good at interviewing or you might not have been good for that job. This I cannot stress this enough. The congruency, going back to the package, going back to what Stacy was telling you about, following the process. The following the process, a big part of following all the steps is making sure that all the stuff is buttoned up from step to step. That's how you make a good choice at the end. That's how you get hired because it's all the same all the way through. You could end up getting interviews 
for jobs that you can't sell yourself for. You follow me? Like this is very important. So for Bob, for somebody like you, you you've got to watch like you almost literally need a little map for yourself, like a little checklist. Did I hit that? Does it look like that? Okay, is it in? Okay, what could they ask me? They told me this is how I could help them. Are my stories ready for that? Like that kind of stuff. That's a really great point. I mean, a really great question. You, I cannot stress this enough, guys. Next week, next week, keep in mind, again, I'm going to teach you everything about generating interviews. I'm not teaching you anything about all that other stuff I just said, meaning Get yourself in order. Get the resume in order. Make sure there's congruency. Art, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna assume all that's in order. If that's not in order, then even though I'm gonna teach you these sweet techniques, you might not be able. It's like handing you a perfectly balanced gun when you don't know how to shoot, right? Kind of thing. So, anyway, just keep that in mind. Giovanni, how are you, Tyler? Hey, Kara's here with us. How we doing? Is everybody enjoying this show? If you are, click the thumbs up. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Get into the job search challenge. Get check the boot camp out. All right, you got five golden opportunities over the next X number of days to get extra private coaching with me. Uh, I mean, in the boot camp private coaching sessions. Uh, check out the networking stuff for tomorrow. I'm gonna send you a little message in the morning about that. You can jump in. It's really a great, great program. Uh, but that networking is really a nice supplement to what you're going to be doing through the end of the year. Tom Phillips, how do? I believe you're my boot camper. Doug Milligan, Tyler, Ahmed, LinkedIn user, Catherine from the UK, Krina, Laura Cobb, you're a, you're a dear. Um, hey, what's this? All right, Laura is asking me. Um, she is a boot camper. She is a leader. <laughs> Sorry, I'm moving around on my Swiss ball here. Uh, okay, when someone gets under your craw, how do you stay mentally fit? So, I, I uh, so. For me, I, uh, and I, and Laura, you know this because I teach this in the leadership program and everything that we do for any of you, and actually the speech bubble is still hanging out of my mouth about what I just went off about, about getting yourself in order and all the congruency. Uh, Laura, you have access to the session on dealing with difficult people. It's in the leadership program. There's a whole session on this. But a big part for the for the public here, it, a big part of not flying off the handle and being mentally fit is it being mentally fit is an all the time thing. There's not one thing that anybody can magically do to me to make me fly off the handle. Usually uh, what you need to do or what I do is, you know, everything contributes, right? Diet, eat right, eat right, sleep. Be rested, uh, you know, plan your day the next day. Why do I say this about being mentally fit? Well, when I plan the next day, I know that I might have an encounter with somebody who is irritating or is unhappy or whatever. But I, I, when I think about it in advance, I think about, okay, what might they be going through, right? They're probably going through a tough time. I try to imagine what it's like to be them. I try to give them the benefit of the doubt. Right, they might be under stress or whatever. So like, I'm already prepping and imagining. The next morning, when I start and I go through my day, if if there's something that's scheduled, I know I'm gonna need to speak to somebody. I'm already thinking about that, and in advance of going, that's in the morning. And then, it, you know, if it's the talk is at two o'clock, at five to two, I'm prepping myself and reminding myself to be empathetic, to be understanding, and all that good stuff. If somebody comes out of the blue, and right, and I don't know it's at two o'clock, they call me at two o'clock. And I actually stop what I'm doing to pick up the phone or meet, you know, or meet them, or whatever. Uh, I, I I I prep myself very fast on the fly to be mentally fit so that I don't I don't lose it. But that's an all. But my point to you guys is it's an all the time thing, and I don't have a mantra about it. I have a whole process that I go through, and I've talked about this in some of the emails that I've sent you guys about the habits that I build 
and part of the meditation that I go through and just the forethought of planning my next day, imagining my day, imagining my day the day of, imagining the hour. So right before we jump into live office hours, so here, here's, another, here's another example. This is a good one for you guys to follow. In the live office hours, I get the same questions asked of me every week. I get mild variations of the same questions. Sometimes people are bummed out, right? If you're bummed out, I'm not getting the results that I need. The tone can be at issue or whatever. I don't worry about any of that. Before I get into the live show, I close my eyes for a few minutes, sometimes five. Actually, this, today it was 10. And I think about you. I think about, you know, God brought me to you at this time. You need me. You're struggling, right? Otherwise, you're not spending your day with me, right? Like otherwise, you're off doing whatever you're doing and you need my help. And even though you might ask me a question that I answered earlier this morning or last week, that doesn't matter. You need me now and that's what you need right now. So I got I remind myself of all of this before I get in the show, right? That's where the empathy comes from because I am an empathetic person, but like that's practiced too, not fake, but actually genuinely reminding myself to interrupt the speed of my emotions that run through, that most of us run through one minute after the other throughout the entire day. We hang up the phone, we pick it up, we call another person, we hang it up, we fire off an email, we fire off an email, we fire off an email, then we run into a meeting. Like if you don't stop and interrupt yourself and remind yourself and be grateful and remind yourself of the people you're going to be talking to and, and how your higher self would handle any situation, you're not going to be successful. This goes for your interviews. This goes, you don't, the interviewer could be having a bad day. You might, they might be under a great deal of stress and now they have to stop what they're doing and interview you at two o'clock, right? You don't know. So Laura, I mean, a lot goes into this. A lot goes into this. If you like that, I have a whole session on this in, in the leadership program, which you get when you jump in. Try it out for a month. It's good stuff. Good stuff. Pedro from Canada. A lot of my Canadian friends. Love it. Tyler got an offer. Can we give Tyler a high 10 for his offer? Awesome. Brandon Leo, my boot camper. How do? Wayne, Tom, LinkedIn user, Sherry Turner. Hey from Florida. Have an interview in an hour. Good luck. Maybe that, maybe you already, let me see what time that was. Oh, Sherry's probably, Sherry's probably already in her interview. Yep, she sure is. Good luck to you. Hopefully you'll, you'll see it on the recording that I wish you luck. Huntington Row, how do? Bonnie Boo, Michael Skeen. My boot camper, I had a partial career change. Here, let's just get this up here. I had a partial career change within software to web development. I've interviewed for senior development positions but can't compete. Do you suggest I search for junior entry level even though they pay is less? So Michael uh, and anybody who is trying to attain a higher role. So number one, I always want you to go for whatever you want to go for. However, I do think that if you are either unhappy with your current position or your company, if you are unemployed, uh, if you are you know, generally having a rough time, I want you to be realistic. Uh, and by that's code for, I want you to be shooting for things that you can attain to get yourself back in the game and get the momentum flowing again. And then work your way up. I just got done saying a little while ago, what did I say? The longer term you think, the more it reduces the risk, the better the short-term decisions you make, right? So right now, isn't it better to just get in and get moving and get right and get going get and start building that career again than trying to make the leap and having and it taking longer to get re-engaged? That's the way I look at it. Now I don't I don't think you should just throw in the towel. I want you to look at are you truly interviewing for roles that you can do? If you are doing that, then my message to you isn't don't shoot lower. Then it's are you sending enough communications out? Okay, so let me be really clear. And so Michael, and you can ask me this in our private sessions if you'd like. If I knew how many times you were not uh, you took swings at the plate. This matters, folks. So if, if you're like Michael, if, if you say to me, well, I had a couple interviews, 
but I can't compete and I lost out and I had two interviews. Two interviews is nothing. Get 20 interviews? Now we'll talk about it, right? Like there's a huge difference because it maybe just those two weren't for you. Well, maybe if you kept going and you got somebody else who was a bit more receptive and you really hit it off with them, be like, I like that Michael guy, man. He's got great attitude. Eh, he'll figure it out. That's what I say, right? We're hiring Stacy. I mean, I, right? Yeah, she'll figure it out, right? She hadn't done this exactly. That's okay, right? She had all the other stuff we were looking for. So it could be that you're just not getting enough swings at the plate. So if you're sending out three messages a week and not three a day, at the end of the week and you got three and then you get an interview over the course of two weeks and then that doesn't work out, that's not, you don't have enough data to draw the conclusion that you just provided. So I don't know which one it is. You might say, oh yeah, I had 10 interviews and I went in and that, that, would, that, would, that would surprise me. Because if you're getting interviews, remember, what do I always say? If you're getting interviews, you're qualified. So then it could be Okay, well maybe maybe they just maybe just couldn't compete with a couple other people. Maybe they just had better candidates. So keep keep that in mind, man. I, I'm I'm guessing you're you you keep at it. You keep at it. You'll 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 be successful. All right, what do we got here? Uh, Jamie, I am moving within my team to another manager. My current boss wants to keep me, but the other boss is trying to hire me for a job I'm more interested in. How do I navigate this, Jamie? I love this. All right, I love this. Um, all right, so what do we got here for Jamie? Somebody else wants her. Her boss wants to keep her. Uh, this is the way I approach this. When you say, how do, how do I navigate this negotiate in team? Uh, my view is I go to my boss and I say, I really need you to support me on this because I'm wildly interested in this new opportunity. It, you know, and I... I I would be gracious, have gratitude, and be thankful for your boss, he or, or, or she, I don't know which is which, but I, I would thank them and I would, I would just appeal to them. If they were in your shoes and you were really interested in something, wouldn't you want to go and wouldn't you want the support? The straight talk. This is not like you don't need to be cute, right? Like get in, go. And then, and then that's it. I, I, I just, I think, but I would not be emailing this stuff. I would be talking it out out loud, whether it's on the phone or through the, through the video chat, if that's what you're doing these days. But I'm, I, I, I don't, I don't see any problem. And then the negotiation part, if you do get this opportunity, all the same stuff applies. All the same negotiating principles that I've given you. Uh, on, on in the salary negotiation playlist apply there i i wish you a lot of luck that's that's great to be wanted it really is it really is and tab hello i've read that recruiters are more likely to contact people that are currently working on linkedin is it best not to update your recent position is it best to not update recent position end date if you were let go due to COVID cuts? I'm going to answer this very specifically as you asked me the specifics. So I would not say this all the time, but right now, let's just deal with it right now, folks. It's November 2020, okay? So I don't know when, you know, if this is on a recording somewhere and you're watching this. At this moment and for the foreseeable future, let's say, Recruiters don't care if you're employed or unemployed. They don't. You know what recruiters care about? Recruiters care about two things. They care about, and this, this is generally all the time, but it's especially right now. They care about if you're the right fit for the position and they love you and all that good stuff, and then they care that they fill the seat as fast as possible, okay? Check, it's done, boom, move on. If you happen to be unemployed, there are some recruiters that will love that because they'll think, all right, well, you can get going right away, right? And start right away. You might be a little more eager, all right? It's true. Now, what recruiters rely on. So back in the day, I don't even love that expression, but back in the day, when LinkedIn did not have its recruiter package that allowed you on the, in, the, in the back end of your LinkedIn profile, even though it's not back end to you, but you're basically hiding the fact that you're open to speaking to recruiters. What recruiters do is they go into LinkedIn and their LinkedIn recruiter package, they search for all the people that fit the profile in their geographical area or wherever they're looking, and they look for people who've 
check the box that have said, I'm open to talking to recruiters, and that's who they go for first. If you happen to be unemployed, eh, doesn't matter. And in, in a lot of cases, if you got the goods and you're unemployed because of COVID, they'll be thinking that's great. Like, hey, I can get you right away. So if what I would say to you is check the box, and then if, if like you were just recently let go because of COVID, like as in October or November or, or September, you could leave it to present or you can, you can end it in October or whatever. If you were let go back in May, I probably would, would end it as well. On the resume, if you're using months or if not, say dash 2020, and then on your LinkedIn profile, I would just end it. This is not a big deal. It really, like, don't you be thinking, uh-oh, I'm unemployed. What you need to be thinking is, uh-oh, I'm unemployed. That might, that might make me more desperate to accept something that I shouldn't because I don't think I have any leverage, which is bunk. Okay? Hang in there, my friend. Lots of luck. Oh, and Ted, let go in April. Okay, don't worry about it. Um, just just roll with it. You can, you can put April 2020. Don't recruiters get it. They do. They really do. If they say, well, what have you been doing since April? You say, I've been going to Andy's live shows. They're awesome. You should check them out. No, it's just like you should say, I've been looking for the right opportunity. Uh, I've been studying up. I've been getting certifications. I've been doing volunteer work. I'm looking for the right thing. I, I, you know, just because I'm out of work doesn't mean I want to jump into the first thing I see. You know, whatever. You package up your story however you want. It's not going to be a big deal. Catherine, how you doing? You know what? Um, this is like the thinnest... <laughs> Huntington Row, you could wear this out in Huntington Beach and not be too uh, too hot. Nikos, how are you? Conley J. Scott the Third, Esquire LLMT. How much are the resume reviews? Great question. I do do resume reviews. I do not write resumes because you should never. Get a resume writer to write your resume. Why? Number one, they won't do near as good a job as you will. Number two, no one cares about your career more than you do. So you can't outsource that stuff. Okay? You can get help, and you might be thinking that that's help, but you could be better off, you'd be better off spending your dollars on something else. They're going to write something that you're not going to love or won't be entirely accurate. Or they're going to take words you give them and pound them in. Or they're going to use a template. Meaning, if you actually Google your phrases, it, all of you, you had a resume writer write your resume, you take blocks out of it, throw it in Google, and you'll find other people with those same bullets somewhere. Okay? You will. Don't cringe when you do. It's just a fact. Okay? It, it, it just, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Then you're not going to like it. Then they're going to want you to pay more to revise it. And... The time you spend explaining to them what it is that you want about you, you, they need to know, you could have written the damn thing yourself and it would have been better. Okay, that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, you could get in my program, in the boot camp, I'll just teach you how to write it. I literally, we give you the template, we give you the Word document, I give you the sample sentences, I tell you exactly how to fill everything in and you write it. Like you write the damn thing in an hour. All right, and, and, and then if you want me to review it, 500 bucks. For you to send it to me, I do a word by word, period by period, semicolon by semicolon, edit. I go through every single line, every single detail, every single thing. I edit everything. I use the track changes, and then I shoot it back to you. It usually takes me about a week or two. Um, but you, you need to be in the job search boot camp because it's an add-on service. But it and I, I only will review, I only will review resumes for people that have been through my program that format it the way that I want them to. Okay, so I mean, you could say, "Wait, well, no, I don't. I that's I'm gonna ask you to put it back in that format because I know this thing works." So that's how that works. Uh, if you're interested, check out the job search bootcamp page. Go to the middle option, and you can select that. And if you are in the job search bootcamp already, or you jump in the job search bootcamp at the at the base package, uh, you can you can get a resume review or a coaching session whenever you need one. So uh, so that's just an add-on service. But that's that's thank you for asking, and I I do enjoy the resume reviews, and and it's it's um when I get done with it, you'll you'll like it, you really will. Actually, you're gonna like it even if I don't look at it. You will if you follow what I tell you and use the sample sentences I give you.
Uh, Pedro, hopefully we got that echo. Bob, just curious, how many computers? Am I... Yeah, you know what? I I uh, I'm not sure what was happening there. Uh, I need my sound on so I could hear her. But I think I think I figured it out. I hope uh, I hope that maybe the back end of Stacy's um, interview was better. I'll have to look back at the replay. April, when interviewing through Zoom Skype, is it okay to sit in my home office with blue walls and pics, degrees on my wall in the background, or should I go to a room with plain white walls? I love this question. Okay, so I love this question because it's it's a great question. It's tricky, and, and it, it dre- a lot of you have this issue. My preference, by the way, you do not need to go take pictures down or any of that stuff. The less you have behind you to distract you, them meaning, the better off you are, okay? If you can sit and look out a window and have a clean wall behind you, that's best. If you got some things hanging behind you, it's cause for them to look at what that is. Now, I'll give you a great example. If you got a Monet behind you, that's it. They're going to look at it, see it, it's done, Okay. If you got your degrees and all that stuff, they're looking at where would you go to school and what is that and you know trying to read it and it, it just it, it you're giving them a chance to pull their attention away from you. So uh, so anyway so 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 keep that in mind. But April, that's a great question. I would it's not the end of the world uh, if you do, and the more fuzzy you can make them behind you, the better. The other option, which I do not like, I do not want you guys to put a Zoom fake background. Okay, do not do that. That is, you know, you're moving your hands, you got things are disappearing, half your face is disappearing. Don't do that. Just be, just be clean if you're doing it through Zoom. Whatever's behind you is behind you. Hey, do you guys like my, my pumpkin pillows? You know, my, my house is very confused right now because we've got all the Thanksgiving stuff up. But we also, like, we've got Christmas trees up now, that not all of them, and we got lights because it was like 70 degrees, so my, my wife ran out and put lights on the house, so it's like very confused what, se- what, what holiday it is and what season it is. But uh, yeah, it's just the way we roll in the last feed house. All right. Mash Computers, Andy, after three interviews, company flipped back to a director level instead of a manager level position. This happened as HR was scheduling a final interview with VP and SVP. What would you do? Uh, I'm not, I I don't know if I misread this, but if you flipped back to a director level instead of a manager level, they are giving you a higher title. Am I misreading that? Um, I don't, I, 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 I'm not sure I understand the question. Regardless of what they do with the title, I don't do anything. I look at the job. Do I want the job? I don't care about the title. I don't care if I was a director before and it's a manager position now or vice versa. I don't care about that stuff. I know a lot of you worry about that stuff. I do not. I wouldn't care. I'd say, what do I get to do? You can call me whatever you want. That's it. I, 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 I don't have a whole lot more to say on that one. All right. So Conley, your audio was fine. I, you know, I'm gonna have to look at that audio thing. Sorry about that, guys. All right, let me see. I got, I'm gonna try to pick up a couple more here. Oh, look at that! I got a couple of boot campers right there. Got a guy from South Africa, Nashlin, all the way from South Africa. I love your videos, and is the reason why I have my current role. Well, love it. I'm a senior manager for a company for 11 months. You must have another one of these here somewhere, but I don't. Oh, however, I'm unhappy with the work culture and my manager is autocratic style. I have a few interviews, but need your help to answer the question, why do you want to leave your current role? Okay, so here we go. Why do you want to leave your current role? If you recently, let me just get to the back, um, your senior manager, it's 11 months. You got to be straight. I'm working in this environment. I really wanted to love it. I've been trying to make it work. I, you know, it's not, it's not what I'd hope for, you know, something like that, very positive, the company's great, and then you need, you need to point to something killer, 
and you don't want to get into I don't like my boss and a lot of this other stuff. It, it's got to be, I would make it something more grand. It, I want it to be true because if, if, you, if, if the working environment itself is the only reason you don't like it, then I would try to work that out internally. If you absolutely cannot work that out and you want to go interview and that is the reason you're leaving is because of your boss, then what I would say is I would talk about I, I'm looking for an environment where I can. And then you talk about what you want, not what he's not or she's not. And you focus on that. Uh, I might have that packaged in an interview intervention if you want to check that out. That's what I would do there. All right, let me see if I can get a couple of these, a couple more of these. Um, Karen B., my boot camper, how you doing, baby? Oh, sorry. When sending the second follow-up email after the interview, do we send it to the boss or hiring manager or to the HR person? If I'm reading you correctly, you should not be sending two follow-ups after an interview. You should send one follow-up, and one follow-up is one follow-up. There's a thank you after the interview. When are you going to get back to me? Who's going to get back to me with the next step? What's the next step going to be? You got to get that data. If you don't have that data, you thank them. And in the thank you email, I would say, okay, just, and I want to thank you. I want to just curious what would be the next step by when you think it's going to occur and so on. That's a thank you email. Then if they have not gotten back to you because you do not have that data, I would wait one week. I would send it and then I would never send another email to that company again. So, that's how I would handle that. And so you're sent and who to send that to? I would only go to the HR person or the recruiter or whoever's quarterback in the process. All right, I hope that helped. Louie, Louie, do not please be jumping over any fire pits anymore. That's not safe, young man. Okay, you know I love you. All right. Hey, Andy, should I apply for the position through the ATS after sending? an email message to a cold connection for a referral of a target company. Louie, I would send it to, uh, to a, the connection. I would give them a little while to get back to you, a week or so. I would try them again. If there's another, if there's, you know, if they're not getting back to you after two weeks, I would try to find somebody else. If you can't find anybody else, then submit it in the applicant tracking system like you never sent them anything. That's what I would do. I would really, I would... I would really try to find somebody inside that organization to contact directly. You set a cold connection, you know, you you sent an email message to a cold connection for a referral. I would go I would I wouldn't I wouldn't bother. I would go I would go I wouldn't actually Louis, I mean to be honest with you, I wouldn't even go to a cold connection for a referral. I would go right to the company and try to find somebody first and try to boss hunt that company as a cold a cold message. Okay, if you got a cold connection, it's not a connection at all, really. Uh, you could try it, but I would not. I, if they don't get back to, I would go directly to the to the organization. That's what I would do there. All right. Hey, I got to run, folks. Job search challenge starts next week. Jump in, boot campers. Monday through Thursday. Just make sure you RSVP. We'll send you that message uh, tomorrow or today or something like that. So you got you get the invites on your calendar. If you are in the job search challenge, we'll get you the workbook Sunday night and each morning you will receive a message about what that day's lesson is about. Uh, I've got text for you. I shot videos for you every day next week. You'll get a like a less than two minute video about what it is, some psychology, why it's important, all that good stuff. Those will be coming daily. And, uh, and then the boot camp promotion runs through Wednesday, the following week of Thanksgiving, when we have another private boot camper coaching session. Tomorrow, I'm with my leadership group on networking and building relationships. Going to be great. Hope you guys could see every and all bits of that. And uh, if, if, if not, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll see me probably uh, Sunday with a new video. Actually, it's, I'm not moving my Tuesday schedule, but this next week I'm. I've got I've got a, I've got the new video coming out on on Sunday cuz we get the the challenge all week. All right, you guys be great. Make sure you're subscribed.